What's up guys, Jake here. In this video, we're gonna talk about an advanced options trading strategy called the Iron Condor. Now the name Iron Condor sounds pretty cool, but it's basically just two vertical spreads in the same trade. So make sure that you're approved for the appropriate level for Iron Condors, which is also the same level as vertical spreads. Now to understand the Iron Condor and why you would wanna do it, you definitely need to understand credit spreads. You're trying to make money from theta decay, from contracts wasting away as you get closer to the expiration date. So check out my options trading playlist. I go through lots of examples. So here is the profit and loss diagram chart. And generally I don't like these, but by the end of this video, I'm gonna do an example and share with you all the information you need to know in order to understand this chart. So a quick recap of the four kinds of vertical spreads. There are two credit spreads and two debit spreads. And the two kinds of credit spreads are the bear call and the bull put. Your net receiving a payment today. So the iron condor is just a bear call spread and a bull put credit spread on the same stock at the same time. Now, normally when you do a bear call credit spread, you think the share price of the company is going down. And when you do a bull put credit spread, you think the share price of the company is going up. However, what if you think the share price of the company is just gonna trade sideways and stay within this convenient range? Is it possible to do both of these credit spreads at the same time to make more premium? In the event I've already lost you, let's just go ahead and recap the bear call spread. This is where you sell an out of the money call option, this is your short leg, to collect a premium. Now, what if you're wrong? What if the share price of the company shoots up? Your losses are theoretically unlimited, this would be a naked call. Your broker doesn't allow it because you don't own 100 shares of the stock. So by purchasing a call at a higher strike price, you're capping your losses, you're protecting yourself. So if the share price of the company shoots up, whatever you're losing on the call that you sold, you're now gaining back on the call that you bought. So this line right here caps how much you can lose should the share price turn against you. So to make money on this credit spread, you just need the share price of the company to trade sideways, go slightly down or go really down. However, what if you don't believe the share price of the company is gonna go dramatically down? You think it's gonna stay within this range. Well, what you're gonna do now is you're going to combine a bear call spread with a bull put spread. You're gonna sell a credit spread on both sides of the current share price of the stock. And by combining these two spreads together, congrats, you made the iron condor, very fun. So let's go ahead and sell a put down here. And this put is currently out of the money. And if we just sold the put, this would be a naked put. Our broker doesn't allow this. If you're wrong about the share price of the company moving, your losses aren't unlimited, but they're pretty high. It's, it's basically the share price of the company going to zero. So to protect yourself, you're gonna need to buy a put below the strike price of the put that you sold. So how do you make money on an iron condor? Well, the share price of the company from where it currently is can go slightly up, slightly down, but it's gotta stay between these two ranges. And in fact, because you're collecting premium, uh, a net credit for both the, uh, the two sides, you have a higher break-even price than if you just sold one. So the break-even price is the, the net uh, premiums that you collect for the two credit spreads. So as long as the share price stays below somewhere around here or stays above somewhere around here, then you're still making money on this iron condor spread. Let's do an example because examples are best and let's do an iron condor on State Street's S&P 500 ETF. This is the most traded ETF or stock in the world as far as options goes. And it can be a bit boring and predictable sometimes. So if we zoom in, and we look at the share price of SPY, it's been pretty flat for a while. Now, if you think in a certain time period, it's gonna stay within this range, maybe an iron condor is a good option for you. So let's do an example on SPY. I'm in my brokerage accounts with Charles Schwab. Let's go ahead and go to the option chain. Now to build this iron condor, first thing you're gonna to have to do is choose an expiration date and because contracts waste away fastest, 
within you know the next two months or less. I'm gonna choose an expiration date of September 17th. This is the third Friday of the month and it's 40 days in the future. And we're gonna to need to see a lot of strikes because I like knowing uh, my options here. So let's do a custom range between 420 and uh, let's see here, what did I say? Four, 455. And then finally, once we have this, we're going to turn on the Greeks because I wanna reference uh, the Delta values. Delta tells you the probability of that contract expiring in the money according to the Black-Scholes formula. It's, it's not you know, a perfect predictor, but it's a rough probability. So when we go down here, I'm gonna look for a Delta value of about 30%. We're currently looking at the uh, out of the money call strike prices. So for 0.31, 31%, I can select the strike price of 450. We now have to choose the width of the spread on the call side. You can do whatever you want here. I'm just gonna do $500. So that covers the bear call side of the iron condor. We now need to go to the out of the money strike prices on the put side. And once again, looking for that delta value of about 30%. Uh, I see a strike price of 430. That one looks good. And we'll go with a width of 500. So I now I've added the strike of 425. So if we scroll to the top, it's been uh, putting these aside and you have to tell your broker, are you buying to open or are you selling to open? Which one is which? So you're always selling to open the one closer to uh, the current share price of $442.49. So this is gonna be a sell to open, sell to open, and then we're buying to open the further out ones. So we're receiving uh, a payment of 471 and 334 for these two contracts, but we have to pay back in order to limit our losses uh, 394 and 174. So the net credit we're getting is $237. And, it, and Schwab immediately recognizes what this is. It even says Iron Condor right here. So let's click on trade and then think about what exactly is happening here. Another great thing about an iron condor is your max loss can only occur on one side of the leg. At expiration, the share price can only be in one spot. If you're completely wrong on this trade, it can either blow past uh, on, on the call side or on the put side, but not at, not at both. So if the net credit you're receiving today is $237, uh, the most you can lose is the width of one of the legs. The share price can only be passed one of them on, on the upside or the downside. So the width of my legs is, is both 500. So I'm risking 500 minus the credit I'm receiving today of 237. So I am risking 263. If you ever wanna uh, go down here and click on trade and probability, your broker should offer you some kind of uh, graph or, or calculations here, so yeah. Max profit, $237, max loss, 263. When people trade iron condors, they really like that uh, risk to reward factor. Uh, if you wanna look at their, their graphs here and change some of the metrics, uh, that's up to you, but I don't, I don't really mess with that stuff. And if you really like this trade and wanna risk even more, you can go ahead and change these quantities all to be 10. So if we click on 10 for all of them, it'll recalculate. Uh, and if we click on market order, then yes, today I can receive a payment of $2,370. But once again, I'm risking 2,630 to trade these 10 iron condors. Let's go back to our profit and loss diagram on the iron condor and use the numbers for State Street's uh, S&P 500 ETF. The current share price of the ETF is $442.49. We then had to sell to receive a, a credit, uh, our short call, which was at a strike price of 450, and our short put strike uh, with a price of 430. Now, we're not allowed to sell naked calls and naked puts because they're very risky, so we have to buy uh, long calls and long puts at a higher strike price on the call side and a lower strike price on the put side of 455 and 425. So what is our max profit? And our max profit is the credit that we received uh, net from these two trades 
minus the width of, of, of one of the side strikes because the share price of the ETF can only be, if we're way wrong on this trade, over here or over here, not on both. So our break-even price on, on both sides is the net uh, credit that we're receiving, $237, subtracted by 500. So you can calculate where the share price is. Uh, it's 430 minus $2.37 two uh, on, on the put side, and then 450 plus 237 on the call side. So if the share price currently at 442 can just stay above 427 or below 452 by expiration, then we're, we're not making a profit. But once again, once you get above these two strikes, uh, then the amount of money you're making is, is, is quickly decreasing. And if the share price of the company gets above these break-even prices, it, it keeps going up how much you lose if the share price is either on the upside or the downside. And then once you reach the long call or the long put strike prices of 425 or 455, it doesn't matter how much higher or lower the share price goes, your losses are capped. You can't lose any more money. So the max loss is $263, and that would only occur if the share price was lower than 425 or higher than 455 by expiration. So hopefully now you understand the iron condor, but let's quickly address what is the problem. And the problem is go going back to those probabilities. We talked about the delta values for the strikes that I chose being about 30%. So according to the Black-Scholes formula, the probability of it being above 450 is 30, below 430 is 30. So add those two together, 30 and 30 is 60%. So a majority of the time, according to the probabilities, the share price of the ETF will be above 450 and will be up, uh, below 430. So you kind of have to factor that in uh, to the risk of doing an iron condor. Now, of course, the probabilities on your break-evens are, are much better. It's probably close to 50% or, 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 or less than 50% that the share price would get uh, above or below that. So you can, you can look at the option chain and try and guess based on your break-even prices what your probability of success is according to the Black-Scholes formula. But with the iron condor in general, I, I, I don't see myself doing these in the future because I would rather look at a share price of a company and say it's not random where the share price is going to be. It's either uptrending or downtrending. And I would rather just stick with credit or uh, credit spreads on the put or call side, depending on the share price movement. The probability that it's just going to stay nicely in this range in 40 days, uh, for me, it doesn't feel like it's 40% it's, uh, or 50% between the strikes. So for that reason, there's some people that really like doing iron condors on boring, predictable stocks, uh, but for me, not so much. Another idea, though, is that you don't have to be married to this entire position the entire time. If the share price of the company drifts up one way, uh, maybe you want to exit one leg or exit the other leg and then reopen it and, and move it for uh, a, higher, a higher strike on the put side or a lower strike on the call side, depending if it moves. You don't have to maintain the entire position all the way until expiration if uh, exiting one of the legs is, is advantageous to you. Okay, guys, if you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up so the algorithm knows it's good. In addition, check out that playlist on trading options for more tutorials and examples. If you guys have any comments or questions, let me know down below. I love hearing from you guys. Till the next video, take care.